Hi, everyone. My name is Marissa Brooks. I am currently the head of the PILS content and communications team. And today I'm going to be talking to the co-directors of the Protégé program, Tola and Maya. Go ahead and give yourselves an introduction. Well, hello. Thank you so much for having me on board today and having me work, you know, talk to you about the Protégé program. Uh, my name is Tola. And I'm the director of the post project program on the industry side. I'm currently a uh, Sanofi fellow I'll, in a conjunction with the Rutgers program. So that's just a little bit about me. And I work alongside with beautiful Maya here. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, also, Marissa, my name is Maya. I'm um, the director of the PILS Project Program for the clinical slash residency side. I currently serve as the PGY2 Ambulatory Care Pharmacy Resident at the Michael E. DeBakey VA Medical Center in Houston, Texas. So glad to be here today. Awesome. I'm happy to have you guys both here. Um, so today our conversation is about fellowship versus res residency. So just breaking it down, what's the differences and all that good stuff. So to start out, what advice would you give to someone who isn't sure if they want to do a residency versus a fellowship? It's a good question. So the advice that I would probably give um, anyone that's in this particular situation is find something that you're passionate about. Uh, find, look into your AFI rotations. If you are early on P1, P2, you have a lot of time. Um, don't rush yourself. Don't feel as though that you are late in the game there's a lot of people even as they're in their p4 years they still don't know what they want to do but when you, as you figure out what you're passionate about stick to that if you know that you're passionate about helping people at a population-based level stick to that that's when you when you find your passion then you'll find something that will actually come to you whether it be residency or um, or clinical route or fellowship route pharmaceutical route um, it'll come to you so um, it's in the best interest to kind of nitpick don't be afraid try new things um explore sign up for clinical competitions, uh, sign up for internships uh, with the pharmaceutical industries. I'm biased. So yeah, sign up for both. So you can be able to kind of get that experience. Yeah. And just to piggyback off of that for the residency side, um, also very much emphasizing what Tola is saying to utilize your APIs, also utilize your preceptors, kind of get their perspective on how they got into their positions, especially if you're interested in the residency side of things. So think about your interests. Are you interested in more hands-on direct patient care? Then residency would definitely be the proper avenue for you to continue your training. Um, again, just having a wide variety of rotations during your P4 year, whether that's in ambulatory care, internal medicine, making sure that you get a very broad clinical pharmacy experience just to almost mimic residency in that um, in that P4 year in a type of way. And in also emphasizing what Tola said and following your passions, seeing if inpatient versus outpatient clinical pharmacy would be best for you. Um, but again, something that I also utilized during my P4 year is talking to preceptors, networking, getting different perspectives on um, different avenues and different jobs in clinical pharmacy can definitely um, see if you are more of a residency slash clinical based um, journey. Yeah, it's definitely important to do something you're passionate about. That's for sure. It'll keep you going. Um, can you describe what a typical day looks like for you in residency and fellowship? Sure. Um, I guess I can go ahead and start with that for residency. Um, so depending, it, it definitely differs based on month to month. So we will have different rotations, whether that is inpatient-based, so internal medicine, whether that is rounding with a um, medicine team with an attending, different levels of medical residents, and you are the pharmacist, you're the medication expert on that team. So you'll be rounding, looking at different patients and clinical cases and giving your recommendations uh, for the internal medicine inpatient pharmacy side from more of an outpatient pharmacy, um, outpatient rotation base, you will be um, having a day of clinic seeing different patients in different settings, whether that's diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. You'll be working with your patients. You may have phone um, visits with your patients or you're calling patients, hearing about their symptoms, different objective things, and um, providing recommendations to your preceptor and other physicians about best medication management, or you may be seeing patients in person. And just to, um, you'll also throughout the day between your rotations have different projects, whether that's your research project. Sometimes you'll have a medication use evaluation to look at the different uses of different medications within the hospital. Um, and you will fit that time in between your rotations, but um, just a general overview of what a day in the life of a resident is like. 
Um, so for the industry side, uh, the, my typical day is um, fairly dependent. Now, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself and I'm going to speak for all the majority of fellows. Um, typical day is usually a nine to five, but depending on the kind of fellowship you have, it's pretty flexible. So I do seven to three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon, sorry, because I want to have the rest of my day to myself. Um, and then Currently, I do a lot of reading of articles, uh, collecting data, um, getting patient insight, informative patient insight, whether it be verbal insight from these patients, I mean from interviews, from panels, um, getting all that information epidemiology-based, demographics, so I could be able to create targets for many different kinds of populations in order to meet unmet needs, right? Um, so those are the things that I do on a day-to-day, -day. currently right now as a fellow. But with other fellows, they probably have more of a, dis depending on the kind of fellowship that they have, um, it could be rotational. So um, sometimes you could have a four month rotation in a particular department, rotation again in the next four months, another department. So this to kind of give you a bit of a feel of what it is. So fellowship is what you make it. Um, it's really what, what you decide that you want it to be. So that's a day to day for my mind. It's pretty simple. Awesome. I'm curious, what made you decide to do a residency versus fellowship? And I know Tola, you told me you come from a clinical background a little bit. So I'm curious to see like, what made you go with the fellowship route? Originally coming into pharmacy school, I wanted to do ambulatory care. <laughs> that, that was my passion um, or coming into it. Uh, I was really intrigued by the, sorry, the um, Coumadin and the Warfarin clinics. Those are really, really nice for me. And it's a diabetes clinic. I, I work with, again, hypolipidemia, hypertension, things like that. These are the patients that we see constantly um, during pharmacy school that I was a part of during my uh, IPPE rotation, not IPPE, but the IPPE rotations. Those are what I was used to. And I decided like, you know, these are things that are, then what kind of made me change my mind was or kind of pivot was I wanted a more population-based healthcare. Um, mm -hmm. I know that I was touching multiple lives, maybe hundreds in a day, 50 in a day, max 150 probably in a month, right? That wasn't enough for me. I wanted more. Um, I also, of course, wanted something that I can utilize my master's in public health and um, master's that I'm currently gaining and I will be attaining next year to a very high degree, and that's what I wanted to do. So going into the HOR realm or the market access realm, that's what I was really more leaning towards or any kind of patient safety, I directed my attention towards industry in that regard. So industry changed my life. I've never had that in experience at all. So I took the opportunity at every chance that I could possibly get at my appy rotations. I did a monograph. I was a part of p and meetings and committees. And I, I went ahead and took those experiences and maximized those things. I also did a lot of courses outside. I did the regulatory affairs um, introductory program along with this is with Duke. So they have that program. ISPOR has free courses and certi certification certifications that you can get online, whether it be for zero to $40. I wanted to learn more about the industry outside. So it's a lot more work that you got to put in to understand industry, um, especially coming from a clinical focused pharmacy school. So you have to really put in that work and do a lot of research. I mean, YouTube videos, um, reading a lot, uh, taking these certification courses, understanding what pathway that you'd like to go. In the end, wherever you need to be that in that moment is exactly where you'll land yourself in. So whatever is for you is for you. It's really great. I'd love to hear from you, Maya, what made you decide to do residency? Yes, yeah, so uh, I was a very eager P1 student. I knew pretty much from the beginning that I wanted to do residency. Um, we had um, different pharmacists and things come in and shadow, um, not necessarily shadow, but they would tell us about their area of pharmacy. Uh, we did have current pharmacy residents come in and speak to our very eager P1 class, told us about the day-to-day -day operations of residency, what that involves, and I was definitely hooked from the beginning. Um, so going as I was going through my IBPEs as well as my ABPEs, I had a wide Wide variety of clinical rotations because I knew that I love talking to people. I love interacting with patients on a day-to-day -day -day basis more than what I was getting um, in my outpatient and just inpatient pharmacy, um, pharmacy experiences that did not involve direct patient care. Um, so what really steered me towards residency and inventory care was I had a primary care rotation as well as an um, oncology rotation that were both inventory care, clinic-based, and I loved that I really felt as if I was making a difference in a patient's life by directly managing their medications, getting to involve the patient in their care, and not just um, telling them, you know, take this medication or do this or do that. But I 
asking the patient from their perspective, well, what do you think if we go this route for your medications and for this route for your therapeutic plan? It was that one-on-one -on -one patient interaction as well as feeling as if I was really making an integral difference as being a part of an interdisciplinary team um, and knew that residency was definitely the route that I would get the widest variety of experiences to get to that point um, was really what tied it all together um, for me for P4 a year and here I am with residency. That's awesome. I feel like P4 year is such like an integral part of your journey and like really solidifying like what you do like and what you don't like and the direction you want to go into. What types of roles are you qualified after you complete your training? So I can speak from the residency side um, after you complete either your PGY-1 or um, especially with your PGY-2 residency, you're qualified to be a clinical pharmacy specialist or the terminology is now moving towards clinical pharmacist practitioner. So you're able to specialize um, if you just completed PGY-1, you're able to mainly specialize in internal medicine. Um, as I mentioned, rounding with teams, being an integral part of the inpatient pharmacy team. If you go on to pursue a PGY2 residency, whether that's an ambulatory care, um, solid organ transplant, infectious diseases, you're able to specialize in that area and become a clinical pharmacist practitioner um, in that area. But further than that, you're able to teach other pharmacy students, become a preceptor in academia. You're able to have your rotation site as well as um, and be able to precept students there, as well as be able to teach and lecture students um, throughout the day as well. Um, in addition to that, you are um, not only be able to um, emphasize in academia, um, go ahead and be a clinical pharmacist practitioner, but you can also, um, you can definitely make, I've, I've seen other clinical pharmacists even make the switch to industry and become medical science liaisons. And so there are endless opportunities after residency of what you can pursue, but I'll definitely let Tola um, explain about the industry. Side. You're, you're already on the right track with that one. We've definitely seen a lot of clinical pharmacists, uh, a few clinical pharmacists, I would say, coming into the MSL position. But to piggyback from that, yes, the, the for the industry side, the the choices are endless. I mean, you can, if you decide that you want to switch from medical affairs to regulatory affairs today, you can definitely make that choice. Um, so coming out of your fellowship and leaving your fellowship, depending on the kind of fellowship that you do pursue, um, some people do end up going into or matriculating into that company in that particular position that they already had their fellowship in. And some of them, or something similar to that position, usually companies will, if they don't have that position for you at the moment, they will find a position for you somewhere in a different department. Um, but if you're in a, fellow, in a fellowship like mine, where mine was a, it was a combination of a few things and you're rotating, um, you have options within those rotations to kind of stick to that after um, your fellowship. And there's some cases that people completely make a 360. There's some people who go from med information straight to regulatory affairs. They're, with, regulatory, with pharmacy or the pharmaceutical industry, everything is intertwined. It's a web. Everything's connected. Everything is intertwined. So long as you're able to speak your projects and the things that you integrate yourself into in your fellowships and you can speak to it, you can practically, the, the, the sky's your limit. You can practically get anything. So um, just know that you're able to contribute to that. And everybody wants a perspective of a regulatory affairs personnel in a medical affairs realm, or everybody wants uh, people in from HUR in the medical affairs or the regulatory affairs realm because you're contributing in some kind of aspect. You've had that experience. So you know what you can bring to the table. So that's, it, those are so, the options are endless. I feel like as a pharmacist, there's literally so many different types of roles that you can take on. And it's really, it's really amazing to see how your career can kind of like ebb and flow depending on your interests and your experiences. But awesome. Well, thank you so much for both of you being on the call today and talking about the differences between fellowship versus residency. Make sure that you all check out the other videos, specifically talking about residency and specifically talking about fellowship to get a better perspective. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for having me, Marissa. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks.